How you guys doing? So it's in the evening for me, so I've been able to put some uh, audio commentary to this video. And what I'll do is go over some of the changes I'm planning on doing to my machine. And some of them are quite substantial. And uh, so let's start. So um, let me bring in a six inch cube because one of the things I wanted to do was have my machine uh, have more Z travel. So what I've had to do is raise up the gantry. So there's some new gantry risers and also the, I'm not sure what you call this, the faceplate. This is part of the Z that is on the rails and is attached to the spindle. So uh, let me, let me isolate this or open it. So this is a lot different. What I've had to do is the spindle mounts are now underneath the bottom rail. So it's like you can't put it in the center and that's just to have the kind of clearance to, to be able to reach the, the swivel board when you're trying to, you know, do six inches of travel. And uh, I have this little helper, zoom back in, this little helper clamp that should help with uh, vibrations and all. Um, JB Work Studio, um, he posted a video in the last couple weeks um, showing some benefits of doing this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna copy his idea and add it in here. And uh, this is half inch aluminum, and it's I'm probably gonna have to do something a lot thicker than this. Just I don't think half inch aluminum is gonna do very much to you know, clamp this down. Let me close this. So this now runs the full travel of this rail and I've had to, uh, let me cut this in half. Actually, let me cut it this way. Just to make it a little easier to see what we're doing. There we go. <clears throat> so this here is my ball screw. This, uh, um, I'm not sure how long this is. This is the standard length on the the standard print and see kit. So uh, I might put an overlay the the height of this, but you can get uh, six inches of travel out of this. So when we're at the limit on the top, can see here that the the BK block, I had to put a little notch in there. Uh, you'll see that notch in the print NC mini as well. And yeah, I think that's a pretty good idea to get the full range of travel. And when I bring this down to the bottom, somewhere about there, you can see I I'm have just a little bit left of the ball screw. So should work out well. Uh, definitely good to have a servo brake on this because if I didn't, I would certainly just run the ball screw nut off of the ball screw and I just would have a bad day. So uh, definitely gonna do some more testing to make sure that the whole system is very bomb proof and reliable. And uh, other than that, should be good. So the, uh, yeah, so the, these rails now are uh, changed from, I think the originals were 300 millimeters. These ones are now 400 millimeters. And this just allows me to get a lot more uh, separation between, and, and also just use dual bearing block carriages. So um, by, by increasing the height of that um, rail, I can increase the distance which is gonna increase the rigidity of the whole system. And by increasing the distance between those bearing blocks, I also have to equally widen the whole Z head and try and aim for a square of bearing connection. Uh, because if I, for instance, you know, if, if I had these uh, separated like that, but then I had like the ball screw, the bearing blocks just right beside each other, uh, forces in 
in uh, in this axis, it's going to be a lot lower than on on this axis. So it just balances everything else. Plus, it also allows me to run the x axis, the bearing blocks for them. I can also widen all those, which is it's going to help you know further increase the rigidity of everything. Um, so by Having 400 millimeter rails, it's also allowed me to, well, kind of forced to force me to put the servo motor behind now and run it to be belt driven. And it's just because I'm I'm gonna run out of uh, travel or space in my enclosure uh, if I try and stick a servo on the top of this thing. And it's just gonna look stupid just because it's so tall and you know it's just gonna be flopping around when when this thing is moving at rapid so better to stick it behind there and you know try and lock try and find a good way to lock it down so what I've what I decided to do for this let me open up this one and obviously it explodes away so I gotta zoom in and the way this works is this will slide in and out this plate is going to have three three bolts isolate so three bolts in the front fasten it down really well two on the servo and then it's just going to clamp down and then and then this thing and you can't really see it there but yeah this this part here has a an indentation in there where where the servo kind of fits. So yeah, that gives me an, a bit of uh, excess material to uh, to make it a little more rigid because otherwise, you know, this thin piece of aluminum, I'm not sure exactly how thin that is. Let me actually check. It's probably like three millimeters or so, maybe four millimeters, 5.7, way off. Um, but yeah, otherwise with this, it's like a full half inch. Uh, these are, I think these are, uh, I think they're called 5M or M5 belts. They're, uh, these ones are, what I'm looking at are 15 millimeters. And that's just really because that's kind of what I have for the uh, the amount of travel here, so no no point in going any any higher or lower. I'll just stick with that, and I think these are 24 millimeter or around their uh, number of teeth. Let me let me close this back to here. Okay, so um, I have ordered a bunch of these ball screw nut housings and they just connect on there and then they have a bunch of bolts on the bottom and on some of these axes well, I didn't really kind of think about how I was going to mount this thing and because of the way the print NDC is designed with having the ball screw and the rails all in one plane it really doesn't give you a lot of space to to hook everything up. So, in order to use a one of these nut housings, uh, I think I've had to increase this from the thirty the odd number of like thirty point five millimeters. So I think I'm running thirty five millimeters height, and that like that gives me a little. Let's see if I can zoom in on that thing. Like, it's no longer intersecting now, but I'm. I don't know. I'm, I might have to increase the height of this thing more, but I'm kind of concerned about the higher I raise this ball screw, what is that going to do with the, the, the transfer force? And it, like, am I going to have issues with the ball screw uh, warping, deforming, whatever you want to call it, as it's under load? I'm not sure. So uh, I might have to look at this more. Uh, it would be nice to uh, 
would be nice to have this flush and then and then find a way to bolt it down but the ball screw nut housing has the threads so it would mean I would have to put the the bolts into the bottom of this thing and I wouldn't have access so by having this nut housing uh, having a gap there it means I can put a plate underneath there of aluminum and then bolt the ball screw nut housing to that piece of plate aluminum and then bolt the plate aluminum to this piece of steel so I might do that and uh, but I might just kind of wait and try and see if you have a better option. I've seen a picture of somebody on the print and see forum where they've taken one of the housings without the the uh, the the chamfers on the sides, and what they did was they drilled out the threads, and then they tapped whatever the housing is going to attach to. So that would definitely be the ideal way to do it because then I could just get some long bolts and then just have it so the uh, these spacers for the the BK12 blocks are uh, enough to you know put this flush or enough to put some shims or whatever in there and then and I just it would just be simple as just bolting it down from the top. So other than that, the next major thing is these gantry risers. So I got to raise them quite a lot and uh, I've gone through a bunch of iterations. I'm not even going to show those iterations. They're in the previous videos if you want to see those. But uh, if you want to see, yeah. So with these ones, I made a box shape. Let me flip that. So you see what the inside looks like. So this box shape is, uh, I'm moving the mass and the, all the material to the outside of this thing. And that should be the most uh, strongest structure you can make out of this. Like a box shape, you know, torsionally is very strong. So took a few iterations to figure that out and people mentioning and educating myself with, with all this stuff. But this is the kind of shape I've come up with. And the reason why this the shape is the way it is is primarily because I want to use uh, um, some flat bar. So this is three sixteenth steel, and the I, the uh, the gantry is one eighth steel. So the steel plate is a little bit more thicker for the gantry risers. So there's a there's a number of things why I picked that. Uh, so being flat bar, the maximum distance for all of these parts, let me actually just open this so we can look at it. There we go. Let me just make it a little darker, too, too bright. There we go. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so with the shape, uh, I don't wanna go very thick on this because I do intend to weld this piece together first and then weld it onto the gantry and I don't want to be welding like quarter inch plate steel to one eighth inch steel I'm just gonna have a lot of issues with warping if I do that and or, or even worse possibly burning through but probably not burning through but there's gonna be a lot more heat involved and heats you know heat distorts so uh, keeping it all kind of roughly similar gauge is probably beneficial and uh, yeah, so everything is can be cut from flat bar, uh, six inches wide, and that should save me quite a bit of money instead of trying to get everything cut in uh, like a big plate. And then also, I know that I'm, I'm going to be very efficient in uh, the scraps and stuff that I I use to cut off this thing. And there's there's not like that's a that's a big kind of flat surface that might cause some resonance issues but everything else the plates are smaller and uh, because this is all gonna weld it's all gonna also warp at the same time um, let me hide this bottom yeah that one there so all of this is gonna be welded uh, I'm obviously gonna clean up this hole so it's centered properly 
but the intention in the long term is to fill this whole thing up with epoxy sand or epoxy granite, whatever people are calling it. But it seems like the the most uh, the best mix is epoxy sand. Uh, so this way, this will allow me to fill it in through the bottom, and then also I'm going to have uh, a gap on the top where when I uh, bolt on the carriages for the bearings, I'll have a way of accessing those bolts. So kind of a twofold thing. And uh, yeah, epoxy granite or epoxy sand is going to come out the tops here. And uh, yeah, so um, this part here, this is where, actually let me just close this whole thing now. <coughs> So that's how it looks. So the uh, bottom plate, that's gonna be my my piece that I, I put on and then uh, assembling and welding this thing. What I'll, what I'll do is first make this bottom part, then weld together this box shape. And, uh, and then I'll, I'll bolt that onto the bottom so I know it's where it's supposed to be. And then I should be able to just take the gantry tube and then slide it in and then make sure everything's lined up and then start tacking away and and then weld it in place. Uh, I left a hole in here on purpose because I want to be able to weld the uh, front and back sides. Uh, I, want to, I want to be able to have easy access to that because I want it to be connected there and also on this side. and. The way I will be doing this is putting a weld here and then putting an, another weld on the back and then on this side. I think I'll probably just weld all three. I, I'm not going to weld the bottom here because I know that's going to cause some issues with bending this tube downwards and I don't really want to do that. Uh, welding the front and the back is going to it's going to push this tube like this side is going to push it out that way and this one's going to push it out that way and that that in itself might and will probably deform the top slightly and and take this top surface and kind of bend it down that way so <clears throat> i'll have to see um, as i'm doing this uh, if i find that the uh, the top surface deforms quite a lot and I have this uh, top piece nice and flush I might just take a quarter inch piece of plate steel and then weld it onto the top of this thing after I dial it in with the dial indicator to be parallel with this surface and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll just make all these blocks higher up and they'll just, they'll just bolt into this top piece of plate steel so I think I'll have to just kind of see how that is as I'm as I'm building this thing um, because of uh, putting the gantry these gantry risers and I don't want to mess with uh, having to deal with a hole and everything for the the uh, ball screw so uh, what I've decided to do is mount a lot of stuff on the side because I, I do have the space in my enclosure uh, for putting the rail, the ball screw and the motors and everything on the side. And this is really just for convenience on not having the mess and have it interfere with the top. And it also allows me to have easy access to the bolts underneath this ball screw. And uh, and then also down the line in the future, you'll notice that the uh, rail is the original length on my print NC. And this design allows me in the future, if I so need it, I could get a rail that goes the full length of this tube. And then I could run this carriage, these, uh, these, ball, these bearing blocks all the way to the end and recoup some of the, the lost travel I get from going with dual bearing blocks with that big of a gap in there. 
when it is in this front position, I certainly have to uh, not have the, I probably have to flip this motor around and have it run above it on the side, like maybe it would have to be up here or something. Uh, just because I'm gonna have to probably run it from a, uh, to be a belt drive, just like the Z. Um, so that's, I think that, that's probably everything. Um, these, these pieces here, these are just really, they're just different shapes. They're, I haven't really put a lot of thought into this. The, uh, the depths of everything is half inch aluminum. So I could conceivably just make these shapes and bolt them together, but I'm still working on refining all this stuff. Uh, these ones are the same on the on the back there. Yeah, so that's that's basically it. After all this, yeah, I'm gonna fill this tube here with epoxy sand. Uh, like I said previously. Fill that with sand, epoxy sand, and then also these risers. And that should get rid of a lot of the resonance I'm having with uh, the servos. And it should allow me to have a, you know, have a lot more, uh, well, I could do a lot more with the tune because right now, at least on, uh, on, on the X axes, I'm finding with these giant 400 watt servos, uh, when I'm doing the tuning, the, the resonance of the servos themselves and and the over travel that they do, which is like, you know, a fraction of a degree, they're, uh, like it's picking up in the ball screw and, uh, yeah, having, having the epoxy granite to uh, dampen uh, some of that vibration would certainly help out a lot. Uh, so yeah, I think that's about it for this video. Uh, this is certainly not a uh, in a static kind of final place, uh, but I think I'm getting closer with how I'm going to do things. A lot of the stuff can be cut out on the CNC machine. These uh, steel angle pieces. This is just going to be flat bar welded together, and then I'm going to do my the same method I did before where. I do flame straightening. So after I weld this, uh, this like this is not going to be nine degrees. It's going to be like eighty nine or hundred degrees, and then flame straightening it on either this side or that side. Uh, doing it with the TIG, it's going to make you know it's going to look ugly, but it works to be able to dial this in, you know, like fractions of a, a degree at a time. So. Uh, yeah, it worked out pretty good before, so I'm gonna do that again for for that for those ones on the the Y and also on the Z. But that's it. Yeah. Um, if you got any comments, uh, shoot them below, and uh, see you in the next video.